I can go to Panama, to Costa Rica, to Mexico, to Antigua. Uh, I can even go to Bali, where uh, Genting just created a stem cell facility and get stem cells as an American citizen, but I can't get them in the United States. Uh, when are they going to be legal here? Uh, when are they going to become available? You know, that is a great question that has been plaguing all of us in the industry for decades now. It's a, it's a, really a phenomenon related to the very conservative regulatory nature uh, of, of the FDA and the systems at, at, at work behind testing, validating, and uh, proving the safety and efficacy of, uh, of, of therapeutics. And so I personally believe that we've been working with stem cells in one form or another for th over 30 years. In fact, bone marrow transplantation is stem cell transplantation. So sure. this has been around a long time. I, my personal perspective is that cell therapy in almost any iteration in the unengineered form is intrinsically safe. And so that's why a lot of jurisdictions, very, very active in Asia, you're gonna see more activity in Eastern Europe and in the, in the Middle East, they are very receptive to at least providing an abbreviated pathway to approval, right? And so when you say, are they legal? What you're really asking is, have they been approved by the regulatory community? I think the United States is sort of behind the times on this. And what it needs is it needs a little bit of courage. It needs, to, it needs a little bit of willingness to accept the fact that the value of the therapeutic potential of these things outweighs, outweighs the potential nominal risk of some uncertainty about long-term safety. We've been doing stem cell treatments in patients for decades and decades and decades. They, they, we do not have that long-term safety signal that should concern people. But I do believe that there are other forces behind why there is this very kind of resistant approach to approving and making these products available to patients. You know, and we'll talk about this because we know so many people who have had significant positive impacts from cellular medicine, from stem cells. And I think of it as one of the fundamentals of the pro-longevity regenerative medicine decade ahead of us. And it's just sad to have to actually, you know, flee the country to go and have access to this tech.